Welcome back, guys, to another episode of uh, the Solvable Mysteries podcast. I'm not sure if you will be able to tell from my voice, but this week I'm a very sick little boy. Um, but we still decided to do the show this week because we have a pretty interesting case, a very captivating case uh, to talk about. I'm joined by Glenn Haikov, uh, who's joining me all the way from California. Man, how are you feeling on this evening? Hello, doing okay. Uh, everybody's got allergies over here. Uh, I don't think you have allergies, though. It sounds like uh, you guys have something else. Um, but yeah, just, uh, you know, easing into the spring. It's very beautiful outside, nice and green. Lots of flowers and been taking a lot of butterfly pictures, so I'm pretty happy. Um, but yeah, that being said, um, sort of a interesting case today that i had not heard of and, and we're back up in uh british columbia again looks like yeah that's crazy uh these cases kind of you know uh all compile from the same location we're going to be talking about madison scott's disappearance um i was a little baffled i've never heard about this case because I've heard about most of the cases that have their Wikipedia pages. This one, for some reason, I completely missed out on. Uh, really quickly to introduce everyone to the case, right? Madison Scott is a Canadian woman who had disappeared on Saturday, 28th of May, 2011. <clears throat> After a birthday party she attended near Hogsback Lake, which was 25 kilometers southeast of Vanderhoof in British Columbia and uh, Madison was from Vanderhoof uh, so that's how that relates uh, at the time of her disappearance Madison was 20 years of age she is a white female her height is 5 foot 4 inches she weighed around 160 pounds at the time of her disappearance she also has hazel eyes other physical characteristics include a bird silhouette tattoo on the inside of uh, her left wrist, as well as piercings on her ears and nostrils. And um, going into the timeline a little bit, I'll try to simplify this timeline as much as I can. So uh, let's say the timeline began on Friday, May 27th, uh, the day leading up to her disappearance. Um, Madison planned to spend a night camping with her friend Jordi Bolduc after attending the birthday party near the campsite of the lake. So the general premise was that um, uh, Madison was going to attend a birthday party with a friend named Jordi. And this party was interesting because it was happening near a lake, uh, near this uh, big lake, right? Uh, the lake is called, it's not that big actually, near a lake called Hogsback Lake. And, you know, it was one of those parties where it has a Facebook event. So uh, there, there, it was publicly advertised. And I think it was like a yearly thing. This one person was, uh, you know, the, like um, setting up their birthday party next to the lake every year at the same time. And uh, a lot of people attended. Apparently, there were around 46 people at the party that Friday night, most of the people that attended the party were between the ages of 18 and 25 years of age. Once again, Madison herself was 20. But there were a few older partiers who that were up to age ages of 40 years old. So, you know, a bunch of like strangers also showed up because the party was publicly advertised. And so uh, Madison and her friend Jordi also attended. Uh, she knew some people at the party. From what I've gathered, she didn't know all of the people at the party. And once the party was done, uh, Jordi and Madison decided that they will camp out in the area because they lived 25 kilometers away from the campsite and they were drinking alcohol during the party. Well, or at least planned to drink alcohol during the party and didn't want to uh, get a DUI. So they decided to just stay put, camp out and then drive back home the following morning. Um, however, uh, Madison's friend Jordi, who was supposed to spend the night camping with uh, Madison, left the party uh, that midnight around 2.30 a.m. with a young man who 
lives close by the general area and apparently uh, it was her new boyfriend that she just met in that uh, on that party. So it's also not completely clear if Madison stayed to camp out alone near the campsite or if she left with someone else. However, the latest information indicates that she was left there by herself and Madison was last seen somewhere between 2.45 a.m. and 3 a.m. Uh, that night by some of the other party goers who were just about wrapping up the party and were traveling back and apparently they even suggested giving Madison a lift back to town I guess but Madison decided to stay put and it makes sense that she decided to stay put because her truck was still at the campsite and her things were her tent was all set up so everything was kind of set up so it wouldn't really make all that much sense for her to uh, go back home and then have to hitch a ride once more just to grab her stuff the following day now uh, what happened on the following day on Saturday May 28th well this is the official day when um, Madison uh, disappeared at around 10 a.m. in the morning a couple of people from the previous day's party right they returned to the campsite in order to clean up they saw Madison's tent was still standing and her truck was parked next to the tent however they did not check if Madison was inside of the tent because they assumed she was sleeping um, also the people that had returned to clean up after the party they also said that there were no other tents or campers in the area also on this day another much larger party was about to take place in the same camping area and this time there was going to be around 150 people at the party including Madison's younger sister however once again when police questioned all of these people that attended the bigger party the following day no one reported seeing Madison anywhere I'd also think it's worth mentioning that both the party uh, that happened on Friday that Madison attended as well as the party on Saturday were organized as Facebook events meaning that anyone in the local area could have attended to be honest also I would like to point out that the party that Madison attended on Friday uh, had an older crowd of people than the one from Saturday so the party that happened the following day the much bigger party on Saturday was initially attended by underage teenagers once again including Madison's sister that's a little bizarre twist to the case I guess now the next day on Sunday May 29th Madison's parents became concerned that they that their daughter had still not arrived the home it was two days at this point that Madison had not arrived home and they went to the lake uh, to the campsite to look for her they found her truck and her tent was now flattened okay her tent was completely flattened at this point her purse was still inside of the truck but there was no sign of Madison or her cell phone anywhere shortly after discovering that abandoned tent Madison's parents immediately contacted the police because they sensed that something was off the official search and rescue effort began the Royal Canadian Mountain Police as well as search and rescue teams from Vanderhoof Prince George, Burns Lake and Fort St. James directed additional volunteer searchers as well. Grid searches of the area starting from the campsite began. Helicopter searches were also involved. The Hogsback Lake was also searched by boats with sonar gear. The search for Madison Scott continued for the entire following month of June. Searchers had covered an immense area surrounding the campsite. All of the nearby roads have been searched as well as uh, uh, you know they were searched and however there were no signs of Madison anywhere so you know that's just a little quick intro into the case uh, there's still uh, very suspicious details that we're gonna jump into right now but you know since uh, for obvious reasons couldn't really uh, <laughs> prepare that well this week uh, in, in terms of the introduction dude what are your initial thoughts you know, one of the things that jumps out to me is the state of her belongings and, you know, the, I guess the, the state of the tent, the fact that there didn't seem to be, I guess, any necessarily any evidence of like a struggle or 
an injury or bleeding or you know some some kind of DNA evidence, I guess that that might tell a story. Now, what I do wonder is, you know, they mentioned her cell phone is gone. I don't know if I ran into this in any of my research. Admittedly, both you and I had kind of a uh, a pressured week, I guess, with with us both kind of at full capacity, let's say. Um, so yeah, what I wondered is, you know, that, that, that would be the first thing I would think of is the phone's missing. M- Madison's missing. So where's, where's the phone and are there any phone records? Was it, was it a place where the phone could be in contact? I guess that would be the, the, mm-hmm. the one thing I, I wonder. Yeah. Well, also here on the visual assets, uh, really quickly wanted to get a uh, crime recreation. I'm pretty sure this is not the official picture. This could be the official picture, but I feel like this is a recreation. Um, and I will answer your questions shortly. Ooh, what have I just done? Okay, yeah, forgot to... Uh, yeah, this week I'm kind of all over the place. I even forgot to equip my little drawing tool, you know, the the, the, the thing that I used to, to draw on the um, on the screen for people that are watching this on the YouTube channel. I just got it, man. Uh, so as you yeah, can you see... Yeah, you forgot your, your John Madden play-by-play. Yeah, man, <laughs> I forgot the John Madden, dude. Uh, this is... Uh, this is the tent that was flattened. I quickly want to give some context because people will maybe get suspicious about the flattened tent. So once again, uh, there were two parties happening. One was on the Friday and the following one was on the Saturday. And someone from the Saturday's party, I think just for fun, they kind of got into this uh, camping site and they trashed it. You know what I mean? Because they're just stupid teenagers and they were like, yeah, look at me, guys. I just trashed someone's tent look at how cool i am i think it was that type of a situation so uh the flattened the tent didn't really have anything to do with madison's disappearance it's just some stupid kids doing some stupid kid stuff you know what i mean um now going back to the cell records i want to also say that you know i was reading the case and apparently from what i've gathered gathered madison spent a lot of the time when this party was happening inside of the tent she didn't even participate to my understanding uh all that much from the party but i could be wrong and she was texting with her father during the party inside of her tent and i think the last uh, cell phone record activity that was uh, confirmed by law enforcement was that at 30 minutes past midnight uh, on the day when she disappeared, she received an incoming call from some dude that the family knows. It was very vague how it was described, but that's all we have. Like, some guy called her phone at 30 minutes past midnight. And apparently the parents know who this guy is. I'm not really sure if they suspect him uh, to have anything to do with her disappearance, but who knows, right? I mean, that's interesting right there because then that like, to us establishes that the phone was able to communicate, right? Because, you know, there's other situations we've had in the past where when this exact question comes up, you know, when it's someplace really remote, I mean, where, gosh, we, we had a missing kid case a couple, a few weeks ago where they had gone camping in a pretty remote place. So, yeah, okay, that's that's definitely narrows down some of what happened here. So yeah, part of me wonders, unless her phone went dead, shouldn't they have been able to um, like trace her, her location? You know, I don't, uh, I mean, I'm curious, do you turn on like location services on your phone for, I don't know, Google or something like that? I don't think I do, man. I don't think no. I do. Yeah. See, but no, no, I wonder though. Th- okay. Let's suppose you're one of the, I, uh, yeah. Let me add that this happened in 2011, so maybe not uh, not everything was as modern mm-hmm. as it is today. Yeah, that's true. I'm trying to remember when, like, the, the Google Maps, you know, persistent session started happening. It could be, well, plus, it, I, did they say what kind of phone she had? I believe it was an thing. iPhone 4. I could be mistaken. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Okay. So, yeah, gosh. So how, how fast time flies that yeah i mean even what 11 years ago um i mean samsung's were were pretty crummy back then too relatively they were just starting to get better um so okay so it's interesting though because i know though that other cases we've heard about there has been some sort of ongoing dialogue and 
some amount of evidence around once again that even just the communication of the cell phone with the tower so even if you turn off your location services nowadays there's still some amount of just um like transactional stuff going on between your phone and the phone company constantly i would like to also add that um expensive motorbike gear was left at her campsite and she also had recently upgraded her iPhone before she went missing. So this is just coming off of the Wikipedia page. I'm not really sure what upgraded her iPhone means. I would probably assume that she got a newer version of an iPhone phone. So it was an iPhone, but it was 2011. So I wouldn't really, um, you know, even, even iPhones back from 2015 look really clunky uh, right now. So 2011 iPhones, I'm not really sure if they had all the latest and greatest, right? But um, jumping back to the map here for people that are looking at this, just to describe what's happening here. Um, now, you probably can see that I have outlined a, um, let's say, a square, a, uh, a red square. This is the area that was searched by helicopters and searchers in general. So when I say that there was an immense search happening, um, it really was an immense search because if you zoom out, uh, you know, it's actually a pretty big portion of British Columbia that has been searched. Um, for Madison, which makes her disappearance all that much more bizarre. And um, to me, one thing that st uh, stands out in this case is that when I was trying to logically evaluate what could have been happening in this case, I kind of came to a conclusion that perhaps Madison left the campsite in another vehicle sometime during the night, because I feel like such an immense search around the area would have turned up something. Um, also, another vital piece of information that we cannot run over is that law enforcement did not find any signs of struggle at the campsite. There was no struggle involved in this disappearance. Uh, they did find some blood inside of the tent, and uh, apparently this blood was unrelated to her disappearance. It was blood that belonged to Madison, and apparently it was blood from her knee, I believe, or from her ankle. But from what I've gathered, it was just a scrape and it wasn't like signs of foul play um, so no foul play was found obviously I think we would have a way better way to evaluate the forensic evidence if that stupid kid from that following party wouldn't have trashed her tent like I would really like to find that stupid kid and give him a proper smack in the head you know what I mean because I think we would have way better you know you know what I'm trying to say here like way better ways of finding out and I feel like that kid is probably sorry by now you know, the one that trashed the camps, yeah. like literally, literally super valuable forensic evidence may have been uncovered, but this kid was like being a dumbass in front of his stupid friends. You know what I mean? Yeah, he tainted it. Yeah, it's sad. I mean, it, God knows why teenagers do stupid stuff like that sometimes. Just, just rant, wanton destruction. I would, sometimes I would say it would be boys being boys, but like, I, I don't think I, I had necessarily had the desire to do that at that age and sometimes it's shocking when people are just destructive like that i will say people will play jokes sometimes on each other by collapsing a tent because a tent like that you can just um you know pull out the pole from the little um the thing that holds it in place at the end it's just tension like the the poles that hold it up depending on what kind of tent it is usually are super flexible so they can bend like a u um anyway yeah i just i i've <laughs> set up a bunch of tents like that over my lifetime um so yeah i just pr probably uh one tent too many um so but, but i mean one thing though i i wonder about that so this this let's, let's, let's use the vehicle example and i, I think for you know the, the, you and i said the, the uh, to each other before we start recording this is going to be kind of a, a little more informal show but i think it'll be kind of fun even before we get to the theories and all the the real nitty gritty around hypotheses to sort of use this, do a little bit, a bit of deductive reasoning and, and pick, sort of sh show the chain of thought before we get to some of the harder, let's say facts and figures as we try to figure out what, what is likely. So in this case, let's, let's, let's use the, um, the idea that she may have left in someone else's vehicle, which I'm kind of surprised I never thought of that before, because one of the theories, touches on a scenario like that. So that, that that makes sense. Let's say there's a party going on and sometimes parties, um, they need more beer. 
They need more drinks. They need more food. Maybe they need more other things. Um, so then somebody makes a run. So, okay, that makes sense. What I would wonder is why doesn't she bring her purse? Why doesn't she, why doesn't she bring her purse and leaves a bunch of other valuable belongings? Well, yeah, even if it was a yeah. short trip, I think she would have brought her purse. Now, dude, that's a very good point. Her purse was still inside of the truck, which didn't make much sense. Also, I want to quickly uh, add upon uh, what you just said regarding a beer run. Apparently, she wasn't really participating all that much inside of that uh, party because uh, she didn't really... Uh, you know, some, some sources indicated that, that she wasn't really feeling all that well during the party or at least wasn't in the mood to party all that much. Um, also, a few more things that I want to quickly touch upon before I let you, uh, you know, to me and, uh, continue on, man, was the fact that there were there was some uh, boy or like some man in this party that apparently uh, Madison was attracted to but he turned her down. I think he said that he just wanted to be friends with Madison. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she texted this information to her father during that evening when they were texting uh, during the night uh, that she was, in fact, um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that she, that she uh, you know, was apparently, uh, was, wasn't apparently that successful with this one dude that she likes and there was also another dude that it was a whole uh, a, a a vice versa situation where apparently this other guy liked madison but madison didn't like him and and madison turned him down i'm not sure if she turned him down during the party or not but apparently this other dude became kind of like fussy and grumpy afterwards uh, once again to the extent that police have looked into the guy i'm not really sure and lastly to point out what you're saying about the beer run i don't think it's possible because let's remember the party was wrapping up at around 3 a.m in the morning and actually everyone was kind of already left and someone actually at 3 a.m did saw madison so we do know that madison was in her campsite in her tent at 3 a.m that that night so um i don't think it was that kind of a situation at least the time Timeline doesn't really add up in that regard, you know. Wait, so she told her dad that she got rejected in a text? Wow, that's an interesting conversation. Or I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I wonder how many of our our listeners and viewers would share that play by play with their parents about getting rejected or not. Not here. Um, it's, it's interesting though, that actually feeds into a little theory I have about her, but I'll, I'll, I'll stick a pin in that for later. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, the, oh, oh, and then, and then the, the, the dude, the other, other guy, the guy that was interested in her, did, I wonder if she texted her dad about that too. You know, um, I, from what I'm gathering, yeah. There, there isn't this information, uh, but the parents are aware of that guy, and they okay. are aware that he was kind of fussy afterwards. What's going on? Yeah, okay. And then, but it's interesting because when you hear the the other part of the story that I heard, that was kind of interesting with this case was, okay, so now the just rewinding a bit. Earlier in the evening, the party's starting to get a little boisterous, and her friend Jordy. I think actually gets knocked into the fire for a second. Oh yeah. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like there's this whole weird scene. I think it's not even people that know that well. Um, and I, I don't know if it's like rough housing or an actual fight or maybe it might've been an actual fight. Something happened. And, and, and so like friend Jordy uh, or acquaintance Jordy, hard to tell depending on, on what kind of rumor you believe. Um, anyway. Yeah. Falls into the, <laughs> falls into the fire and um isn't really badly hurt because uh you know it probably was just fast enough you know that she got herself out and then she's like all right i'm done i think i want to go to sleep now <laughs> almost almost burned to death i think i just want to you know eh, call it a wrap and then um but uh, madison doesn't want to go to bed so i thought that was interesting she insisted on staying up so for all this like we have one set of descriptions of, of what's going on that she isn't is that right that she wasn't really participating that much and then all of a sudden it gets to like the the boisterous part of the party where i, I don't know what else is going on after this 
Um, it's strange to me that all of a sudden, you know, oh, all of a sudden now she's a party animal that wants to hang out. So let me ask you something. Did you ever, uh, is this is something that I thought of. I wonder if part of the issue with this party and maybe even people's expectations or, or how they acted was what if there was like two, two groups of people at this party? Um, Oh yeah. Sorry. What, 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 sorry, sorry. What, 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 the, the groups I really mean are, I don't mean like, like, I mean like peer groups, I mean more like kinds of people. So, um, you know, full disclosure, you know, I, I'm living in a state that has legalized cannabis. Um, but I'm also old enough, uh, to remember. And it's, I mean, it's like that now, this now still, but, but something like cannabis, which we now know is, I mean, uh, don't, don't take this as medical advice, but all the studies I've seen say it's nearly impossible to overdose on, on cannabis, save like maybe, you know, choking yourself to death with smoke. If you stuck your, your mouth over a chimney or something. Um, and there's some other weird side effects from getting too much THC, but you know, it is, it is, it's interesting that the cannabis for, for many other people around the world who are not that familiar with it or who, who kind of grew up with like the, the propaganda and the, the, you know, the, the set of facts that we all grew up with back in the seventies, eighties and nineties, um, they really demonize it. So for some, some group of people still anything beyond alcohol suddenly becomes a situation that, uh, I guess in their minds is a lot more seedy, you know what I mean? So, but, but meanwhile, you have the, the people from maybe, maybe, maybe some of the, the, that, that person who's prejudiced against, let's say, um, parties that have more than just alcohol, that same person may have friends and family members that they don't even realize, you know, use cannabis, use some other substances, you know, psychedelics, et cetera. And, it's, you know, people who are in that second category, they often kind of have to keep it secret from people in the first category, lest they be judged. Or even if, if the people in the first category, the sort of, let's call them the um, no drugs except alcohol crowd, um, if they do know, they're like, well, just don't, don't do it around me. Like once the party gets to like, you know, once the party hits midnight or one in the morning, you guys go smoke your, go do your thing smoke your smoke your smoke sniff your sniff whatever you're doing psychedelic you're psychedelic but like i don't want any part of it and then that makes me wonder if there's something else going on here and that's why maybe the first part of the party was boring the people that were like eh, you know i i don't really need I'm, I'm in my 20s beer isn't really that interesting anymore like it was when i was 16 let's say for them but then you know, there's, there's like this other subtext going on. And I, th I think the thing is the people in, in group A, maybe the Geordies of the world, they don't necessarily know what's going on with the group B people and, and maybe like, like the, the schedule and, and the hookups and the associations and things like that. I, I know that that went a little long, but does, does that kind of, does that make sense? What I'm trying to, what I'm trying to explain. I was, I was yeah. just trying to wait <sighs> until you give the question <laughs> and I had, I oh have no God. idea where you went with this dude. I have no idea where. Oh, okay. Where so, went. so yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is the, the question really is, does, does this make sense that like maybe more was going on at this party than just the straightforward, like, you know, the birthday party and celebration, like maybe when people get together in the woods like that, I mean, I'll tell you just, just, just personal anecdotally, while this isn't me, I wasn't part of those parties. Uh, Cause nobody invited me. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I mean, I, I have friends though that were in college at like, you know, UC Santa Cruz and Berkeley and all these other colleges, you know, and universities around the U S and definitely like going out and camping and, and doing things like shrooms or, you know, especially just cannabis, um, LSD, maybe for some people that were like on the further, you know, further down that if they could get their hands on it, you know, Molly, things like that. Like, like that's, that's not alien to, to, to like the party crowd, especially in British Columbia, which by the way, had, had the, the most, some of the most lenient cannabis laws in the world until you know just fairly recently when the rest of the world kind of caught up with them um 
that's a place that's like it's it's a weird place full of kind of rugged people and it's a weird mixture up there of the very conservative and the very liberal or the even the let's say the 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 uh, an anarch i can't say it anarchist type people or libertarians you know like people free there's just like it's, it's a weird bunch of people like the very people that are into like outdoor stuff people that are into like kind of this weird you know rural living yeah i, I mean it's, it's, it's a little bit of a wandering discourse but I, I i really like when i when i the more i i thought about this and more that it gets into some of the theories we'll talk about like maybe if there was an accidental overdose at a party and everybody freaked out because all of a sudden you know it gets beyond um just a party or somebody getting hurt if someone get dies off of an illegal drug well what happens to the person that procured and supplied said illegal drug mm. so, so that's so, food for thought so so there is no question right there's just uh there's just you know that this idea all right it's just yeah yeah there's no there's no evidence pointing to this necessarily i think that what, no no i'm asking you, you, you were yeah. you were saying you said that you have a question i'm just still waiting for the yeah question. so i mean no it's, yeah so what, what, what i mean what do you think of that do you think of that i mean do, have you i i i know where you admittedly maybe the, the supply of <laughs> the party dynamic might be different in, in lithuania so that's why have you ever heard of that where like maybe there's there's like two parties at a party there's like sort of the before party and then the after party. So maybe Jordy didn't realize that like, you know, the after party was starting, you know, when she got knocked into the fire and that the, uh, the hard stuff was about to come out. And maybe that's what, I'm not saying that's what Madison was waiting for, but maybe that's what someone like Madison might be waiting for if they weren't so animated in the first half of the party. And then all of a sudden, you know, the thing turns into a crazy mosh pit. And she's like, oh, now, now I'm staying. Yeah, but I don't think that's how the party played out, right? I, I assume that the party was happening and it all wrapped up at 3 a.m. and Madison did stay inside of her tent for the entirety of the party, so she didn't really come out of her tent. I don't. Well, think... wait, I, wait, I'm confused because I thought that I that the whole thing was that there was a, there was some questions about why Jordy had gone to bed. You know what I mean? I thought I thought that was the whole point was that Madison wasn't in her tent. That Madison was at, like this kind of fireside part of the party, and that's because otherwise, why why would you know what I mean? Why would why would Jordy care? You know, that was that was the whole point was was because there's some questions, you know, always there's always whenever there's something like this, there's always questions where someone will say, well, why Jordy? Why did you leave Madison alone? And so, but but to leave her alone, she has to be there, right? If she's in her tent, then she's not alone anymore. She's just gonna go to sleep well like everybody else yeah but jordy yeah. jordy left the camp oh, left the actual venue okay yeah J jordy <sighs> left the campsite with some someone else yeah that's that's why i was like what's well, i mean the whole thing is is bizarre i, I yeah I, I, I gotta apologize then because the way i heard it i was confused to me it sounded like i guess in my mind i thought everybody there at the party the you know almost like like a scene out of an 80s movie or something like everybody's at the campfire they're drinking and they're partying then this fight breaks out and jordy gets knocked into the fire um why is that video not on reddit uh yeah yeah so okay so so i don't yeah i don't even understand why she was at the party then that, that's the, the maybe that's one of the top mysteries is why would you go to a party and then sit in the tent all, all night yeah that's that's a, that's a valid point we don't really unless know. Mm -hmm. unless you're tripping yeah but then you know we <laughs> so I, I see the, your point but there's like at least in my research like there wasn't any indications there's of no yeah yeah and police kind of questioned everyone else in the party yeah they did and, and um surprise surprise nobody admitted to having illegal drugs to the police <laughs> you know what i'm saying i mean i don't know would they would they would they say oh well we, you know we were we were doing we were doing fentanyl but uh you know and I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, no, you know what I mean? Like, like, so they, yeah, they investigated all these people. I mean, how, what did they go search their houses and like, I mean, I guess maybe they could have run through any prior arrests or things like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we can move on to the next point. 
Yeah, well, I think that's the that was the cam- uh, the party points, right? I think uh, I don't know uh, what the other points do we have here. I'm trying to see here. Well, I think we can move into the theories, right? What we think happened, because uh, well, al- unless you have some other points. I mean, no, I. I- I think we'll just probably start to, to, to work through them at least. Um, well, let's let's look at the, the lead one. So the lead lead theory, just transitioning from what we were talking about, is you know the the idea is that that make her friends or her companions did something to her, right? Or or well, sorry, it doesn't even have to be friends or companions. It could be anybody at the party, right? So it could even be a stranger, but we're going to, for now, we're going to exclude like the, um, whoever it is in this theory, they'd have to be at the party. So we're kind of excluding, you know, um, Jason from Friday the 13th, wandering in from the woods and killing everybody kind of stuff, or, you know, someone, 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 someone driving in off the road and kidnapping her. That's a theory, but that's, that's, that's a down the road theory for what, what we're talking about right now. I mean, literally figuratively. But right now, what we're talking about is, well, what are the odds that, you know, for all this questioning of friends, what are the odds that there was some kind of personal animus and they conspired to, like, a, a, a attack her? Um, and then, you know, people even wondered, like, why, why, you know, for your point, why was she even at a party where... I know people were kind of frankly surprised in the uh, retrospect that she was there. They were like, she's not even a good friend of this person. So why, why would she have attended? So in terms of this theory, well, I don't know. Police kind of asked and uh, interviewed everyone who was at the party, at both parties, the 150 people from the Saturday's party and 46 people from the Friday's party. And uh, apparently they all passed polygraph tests, or most of them. So I'm not really sure. The only interesting detail to me is that there were apparently some people that were close to their 40s that didn't know Madison. So maybe they had something to do with her disappearance. But, you know, there I don't think there's that information uh, uh, put out there. And then I guess from that, that, that thing, this... It, this is like the deduct. I think it's deductive reasoning. It's going through and saying, "Well, let's let's figure out how how could this have even gone down, and is there any sign of it?" So, one thing I noticed about her, I, I, Madison, her photographs for some reason versus let's say other um, specifically missing women that we've seen, she has like an interesting kind of presence in her photographs. I, I, I mean, when you let me just ask you. Do you get any kind of first impressions off of the photographs of her? Do you have any, I mean, just, 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 do you feel anything? Do you feel, do you, what kind of person is this person? Is this person a quiet person? Is this person a loud person? Do you think they're happy? Do you think they're sad? Is there anything you kind of get a sense of from sort of the constellation of photos? I know they're using like certain photos for these missing posters and there's some other photos out, out there obviously because she's you know lived her life you know at least part of her life overlapping the facebook and social media era what are your what are your thoughts do you have any kind of preconceptions um well from uh what i've gathered she was an outgoing person and she had a bunch of friends and uh she apparently was working for her father's company something to do with car repair so it's hard to say i think she you know, I, th- I think she was a pretty, seemed like a pretty happy person. Yeah, it, happy. I would, I would say, would you? I kind of get a get a feeling. I, I, I mean, I, she's sort of an act. She has an active. Uh, let's say, because uh, whenever I ever hear like uh, Jordan Peterson or um, Dr. Grande do like the five factor model, of the personality. Um, she seems like she's someone that has like maybe high extroversion. So somebody who isn't shy. I mean, somebody who's doing a selection of activities. I'll tell you, I mean, just based on a couple things is one, one thing when I look at her, her, at her photograph, she looks intense. I don't know that she looks hostile. Like remember, I, we talked, I've talked about this in the, the previous episodes about when they do those studies about people, um, their photographs, they often 
even when they're trying to smile and look friendly, if someone has like, let's say a host, hostile attribution bias, something like that actually will show in their photographs where you'll, you'll get a sense of it through the photographs. I don't know that I, I that, that specifically is what I sense, but I sense someone who might be like relatively high in testosterone um, or energy. It'd be interesting to find out that she's really shy and doesn't do anything. I feel like if she wasn't shy, she wouldn't be there. And I feel like a really shy person maybe doesn't get tattoos and piercings um get ready for the comments that say i'm the shyest person ever and i have 20 piercings um yeah i, I just it, it's interesting to, to to look at her and, and also her her face is um i mentioned before that a wide face is, is sometimes a marker of uh high testosterone uh especially in men but i think also in women i mean she has she has a pretty prominent chin she has a pretty wide face i mean you know someone someone could say well maybe her whole family looks like well maybe maybe her whole family is high testosterone maybe that's you know, or maybe this is just a um, artifact of her being relatively short, and maybe having like um, uh, like like an ethnic ancestry that has just bone structure in a certain way. Um, but yeah, that was that was sort of my my my, my initial musings about her. But regardless, she's five four. She's one sixty. I don't think she's going to be. Easy. I mean, she's essentially the size of a small man. She may not be the be as strong as a small man. Yeah, but she's not, she's not, she's not tiny. She's not petite. Um, and she's in relatively good shape. Uh, like the picture, she doesn't look like she's, you know, um, morbidly obese. And what would say, well, why do you care about that, Glenn? I care about that because I think she might have a lot of muscle. Like I can tell you, like my, I'll give you an example. My wife, when my wife was like not that much older than this, than, than this age, and my wife is uh, like five inches, six inches shorter now um and probably about 50 pounds lighter than her my wife was able to to carry a massive tv like like hold the weight of a massive tv while we were um moving it so i always think like never under, underestimate someone who's stout and um you know has, has muscle in the right places so then okay how does this how does this happen like how do you why would you do it so where's the why why would the friends do that what what could possibly have gone so wrong before this party or during this party that a group of people would conspire to, let's say, kill her and get rid of her or sell her to trafficking or whatever it is. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't seem plausible, right? It doesn't versus other, other cases we've covered where there was more personal animus, et cetera. Yeah. I would say I didn't see the reason that the friends would uh, do that. But once again, there were some other, 40 or 40 year olds at the party so who knows what they were about but i would say yeah i don't see the uh, the reason okay so then i could see somebody devil's advocating us and saying well who says she was conscious maybe she was given something like a like a date rape drug or ghb something like that and you know passed out or or if you know you know my theory my theory with the the you know she's in there and she's she's tripping um and maybe she goes into a state of consciousness where someone comes in and takes advantage of her and then they decide to get rid of the evidence I, all, all these scenarios it still gets very difficult because it you know requires either moving an unconscious person by yourself if you did that by yourself which would be hard to do at a party full of people and hard to do without leaving like drag marks and all these things that we've run into before. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And then if it was a group of people, once again, like why, why would they do that? It, it, it just, it seems like a lot of cooperation and collaboration. And you would think with the questioning that happened around this case, that the police would have picked up on something like that you know, like a conspiracy of, let's say, weird 40 year old guys at the party to um, like assault and abduct this young lady. So that that, that was kind of my, my, my chain of thought through the, the murder, um, the, the, the personal murder theory. What do you, what do you think so far? I mean, are we, are we, are we kind of, are, are we good in maybe knocking that one out as, in terms of, uh, you know, maybe eliminating it or, yeah. I think okay. so. I think I think we're Thanks. pretty good with that. Yeah, I feel like police would probably zero in on someone. So then the next one was sort of the, the next theory would be, well, what's the natural extension of that? 
But what if it was an accidental death, right? I mean, for sure things happened at parties, but you know, per my, my little, <laughs> my little wildly speculative, just opinion and, and not at all based in, in fact, and, and not at all, you know, anything anybody should take as, as, as anything against the people that we're talking about today. But let's suppose somebody had an overdose from something illegal at a party. And that's why nobody would want to report it because they said, oh my gosh, you know, we brought, we brought a whole bunch of Molly or, or, or something like that, but or we thought it was Molly and we were stupid, but we didn't test it and it turned out it had fentanyl in it. And, and that, that's no joke, by the way, fentanyl, um, <laughs> that's almost worth a, a, a show, maybe on someone else's show, but fentanyl is amazingly dangerous and easy to get the um, measurements wrong in a fatal way. So that's one of the reasons why there's so many more, people don't even realize the amount of fatal overdoses in the United States alone has gone up massively uh, in part because of stuff like that. So let's suppose someone gets a tainted dose of drugs or they just, they have some kind of, eh, they maybe have a drug complication. What if, what if, what, as a matter of fact, what if someone just died from something completely unrelated and everybody panicked and thought it was something that someone had provided? Like they weren't even sure if she had taken whatever else they had taken. Um, regardless, they don't want anybody sniffing into that. They don't want to be tainted with that. So the theory, that theory, this theory would be that Madison dies in her tent or some other way at the party. Other people at the party know about it and they all collaborate together, or at least the ones that were awake and knew that it happened, would collaborate to hide the body, hide the phone, I guess, too, and turn off the phone, and then all lie about it and stay consistent in their lying and never crack for all this time. I feel like that's fairly unlikely, right? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't sound plausible to me either. Um, but I think this is good because we've knocked out maybe two of the more, well, we haven't knocked them out, but I think we've, we've, we've done some, some decent amount of effort in terms of trying to flesh out whether this, this could have even happened these two ways. And this, I, I would say these, th this is probably two of the leading theories. So if that's the case, then if it's not neither of those two, I can only really think of two other main theories. Um, so let's, let's just call one. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lump something else in here just so we don't have to have too much going on there. Let's call it the self-inflicted, um, uh, uh, disappearance theory. So that maybe in a fit of depression, maybe not in her, not being in her total right mind. Um, she wandered off unintentionally or unintentionally and something happened to her. Like she fell in a river, fell in a lake, fell off a cliff, disappeared into the bush. Like, uh, people are apt to do. Um, I would like to cite my Jared Negrete episode that I did, gosh, about a year ago. It was one of the extras, if only because that was a case where not only did somebody disappear exactly like what I'm talking about, where someone literally, they, they, they were, they were on a, on, a, on a trail around all kinds of other people and somehow they made a wrong turn and they were gone. No one has ever seen this person again. Well, years later, someone else did the exact same thing. And a slightly older boy, young man, did the same thing. He disappeared too, but he lived. He, he was found again. He, went, he, he hiked something like 40 miles or something ungodly amount of miles. And he was found again. And he, he lived to tell the tale. And it was amazing because it was like, wow, no, this could really happen. I mean, this guy, when he said what, what he went through when he was lost in the dark like that, and people were looking for him for both of these. I mean, for a lot of people, people get looked for. I think it, it sometimes one can underestimate how easy it is to get lost in the woods and how easy it is for the woods to conceal your body, even from the latest in technology. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think so. You know, maybe she didn't wander off 
but once again it was searched right the area very extensively so i would probably lean towards it that didn't happen yeah but you know that i mean that's that's the thing i think that's the thing that, that i mean i'm not by the way when i say this i'm not um saying this to you obviously i'm saying it almost i'm like i'm frustrated with <laughs> with life or or the world or the universe what's crazy is like this will often happen that people they will do very extensive searches with hundreds or thousands of volunteers and they never find it i mean look at the casey anthony case they found that body in a in a, in a little park really close to to where she disappeared and it was a park that had been searched and the thing that was found had been there for a long time so somehow with all that searching you know in in a, in a i mean in the casey anthony case in the middle of a neighborhood right in a kind of a, a a suburban area not even a rural area they couldn't even find you know this one kind of glaring thing that they were looking for and that's that's the case for i mean even uh people whose bodies have been found in city parks and stuff like in washington dc and things like that you know murder victims where they just right in the middle of a park where people should have seen it people should have run into it but they don't so yeah I, I i i'm not i think i have much higher confidence for search parties when the person you're looking for is conscious and um trying to get found but when the person yeah yeah maybe, maybe has fallen and is injured or unconscious um or you know swept down a river um that's when i have to wonder what you know like like what else what else could happen there so i i mean the <laughs> It's interesting because I I'll say right now, this is I'm just gonna gonna say it right now. This is actually the theory I'm I'm leaning the, the most towards. So, some someone might ask like, well, why do you why do you feel so strongly about that? Well, okay, this, this here's here's how I ended up down this road is um, the last theory would be that well, this my my last theory, and I I, I apologize, Jerusalem, because I think I'm I'm filibustering so much today um, because I I want to give you a chance to to breathe and, and uh, recover today. Um, and I just want to hear myself talk for a second. <laughs> just kidding. Um, no, but I, I mean, I, th I think from, from, from my, my, my perspective, the only other theory besides her doing something to herself intentionally or not would be something like she got kidnapped or human trafficked by a complete stranger, right? So that that's, that's the big one and, and specifically some people even mentioned that this is on the, what is it, the Highway of Tears? I think it's called, I was going to call it the Trail of Tears, the Trail of Tears, something else. Highway of Tears. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want to uh, uh, say, say, say a thing or two about the, uh, the Highway of Tears? I didn't really ended up researching too much into it. Apparently there was like this highway in British Columbia. There's a bunch of like indigenous people that, uh, indigenous women that go missing off of it. The, the family said that uh, they strongly believe that she was not part of the highway of tears disappearances, but who knows, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll have to say that the highway of tears thing is interesting because it seems to have a lot of attention and it seems to become like uh, sort of this rallying point for, you know, concern about missing and, and murdered um, women and, 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 and things happening to indigenous people. The claim is, and I say claim because I would like to see the numbers. I haven't seen the numbers. And, um, you know, I think this, this might actually be a good show topic by itself someday, uh, depending on how interesting it is. I think if anybody listening to this or watching this has some extra information on Highway of Tears that, I, that you know, isn't immediately available on the internet, it would be interesting to know you know, what numbers they're using when they say that, because what they, what they say is, well, there's a disproportionately, this is an exact quote from Wikipedia. There is a disproportionately high number of indigenous women on the list of victims. There's no actual source for that um, when it says that, but I say that's interesting because disproportionate means that for whatever proportion, you know, the indigenous women were of the population they're looking at, they're saying more. They're saying more than you would expect if I'm interpreting that right, and if they're interpreting that right, more than you would expect were, would be women and, and indigenous. Um, interesting, because when you look at this, uh, one of the, the sources I have um, in the script today, is just a, a list of, it's just, it's just an ongoing list of people who are missing 
in um, British Columbia, and uh, it's it's actually the 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 missing persons in British the... Columbia missing people link under number four on the outline. Okay. Uh, Missingpeople.ca. Let me see. And it's yeah, it's I, I thought it was interesting to look at it. I mean, I, by the way, maybe this is a little public service too for all those people that are actually missing. It's always good to to get other people's faces on there, but it's a pretty diverse group. So I thought to myself, gosh, I mean, I mean, obviously it's clear a lot of people go missing and it may be, it may, it may well be that, that, that what it is is out of this group of people, maybe it's some, some good amount of the people we see here go missing for a reason that they found out later, like, you know, whatever it is, whatever, you know, the mental issues or they're homeless or it's a custody dispute or, or something else, or they just didn't want to be found anymore. Okay. But it was interesting to, 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 a try to match up, like, like there's a claim. And then when you say, well, they're, they're, they're talking about in, in the, the, the highway of tears, they're talking about 40 plus women, maybe the number numbers between 15 and 40. And, you know, when you look at there's, there's crime statistics that I've also dropped in the outline that show um, the different incidents of crime for go to go to page four on that. Uh, there's this crime statistics one. Yeah, I have it. And page page four has an interesting summary. Uh, go a little bit lower. I think it's the next one. Uh, actually, go 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 too high. Go one more one more higher. There's one. There it is. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. So. It's interesting because if you look at, I, thought, I mean, I, I thought this was this. So remember, we're just talking about British Columbia, and we're saying, well, how likely is it that someone would even get kidnapped? Because you look at that, you hear the description of that highway of tears. We're talking about forty people. Well, oh no, it turns out in real life, the number of people that get, um, the number of police reported criminal code offenses in British Columbia under confinement. So under. Um, yeah, there's a, it's, it's a, 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 it's, it's down near the, near the bottom. It is, uh, no, no, it was, it was on that page. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, there, uh, yeah, is that the one you have highlighted? Confined? Confinement slash kidnapping? Yeah. Yeah, forcible. Yep, 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 that's it. Yep, forcible confinement slash kidnapping. So that's interesting because you look at that. I mean, for two years, so, you know, it's somewhere between, let's say, 360 and 400 and something per year, let's say on average, that are reported. So, and then now this is gonna be me back on the side of the activists. I'm sure they would say, and I would probably agree that the people that are reported are the people like Madison that someone cares about, right? So that's that's the one thing, one of the things, I mean, one of many things Madison has going for her is she has family and peers that love her. Oh, yeah. And that care about her. So I would think, you know, you can imagine if that's what makes up these hundreds of people that are reported to the police as missing. Oh, sorry. So not, not as missing as kidnapped. Right. So that isn't even missing. That's like actually kidnapped. Um, it, to me, it feels like there's a there's a bigger iceberg under that water. You know what I mean? If that's the tip of the iceberg, then. Yeah, the poor souls, the unfortunate souls who are born into poverty, born into neglect and abuse. Um, and, you know, who because of that fall into, let's say, prostitution or just utter poverty situations where people take advantage of them. Yeah, I could see that. That that makes sense to me. So then the question is, is there a bigger <laughs> like would let's suppose that there is some amount of human trafficking and awful people preying on, let's say the um, people living in the shadows, people who are unfortunate, people who don't have um, people advocating for them and standing up for them and taking care of them. Would they go out of their way to go to a campsite full of potentially hostile people to grab this one random young lady 
I don't know. Yeah. It, I would say that's probably little... unlikely. Well, I I mean there's always a chance, but well, 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 yeah, so maybe so maybe maybe I'm I'm like uh maybe I'm I'm straw manning a little bit. So maybe maybe there's there's a different scenario. Maybe the scenario is she gets out of her tent and she wanders someplace and then someone is driving by and it's a crime of opportunity but once again it's it's like it's still there's still this like physical struggle i mean unless someone pulls a gun right and that would be i guess oh, that yeah. that's yeah that's that i guess that, that's the one thing maybe that's the big big blind spot for all my blabbing today i've never thought i've never brought up the possibility which we we know is very real now based on, on other episodes recent episodes we've done where someone will pull a gun and their victim will be a hundred percent compliant to their own, um, you know, like like doom, really. But 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 they, you know, in the moment they were frozen, they couldn't do anything about it. They were afraid. Um, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to be brave in front of a gun. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I mean, of course, if she wandered off and someone like pointed the gun and it's, I mean, it could happen. Of course. I, I do think it was it was interesting. So like the, the funny part was when I was going down the whole the whole research thing for um, Highway of Tears, and I ended up running into all these statistics. Well, I mean, gosh, there's so many great um, you know different sources of data. Even even for some some place like like British Columbia, which you know in the past maybe it would have been harder to find this. But it was interesting because I said, well, let's let's go back to theory number three which was the, you know, self-inflicted, whether intentional or not. So the unintentional part of that would be someone gets up in the middle of the night or maybe they're under the influence or maybe they're depressed, whatever it is, they, they get up, they're kind of wandering around a relatively unfamiliar place at night. What are the chances that somebody could like maybe fall into a river, or fall into a lake? Um, now, obviously in this case, is it just, you know, I'm looking at the map here. I see a couple of lakes. Is it, is there any kind of river connecting those lakes? Like I just, you know, I mean, when, when I see lakes nearby, I always think, well, maybe they're connected by a river or something. And that's why the water's pooling in those places. Um, I just wonder, is there any other kind of major waterway reasonably nearby that she could have been swept away in? Cause you would think if it was a lake I'm no expert, but you would think if it was a lake, she would probably, you know, float back to the top if she had drowned. That's always the expectation. It doesn't always happen that way when someone, you know, is in a car or something. But when it's just a body by itself, not weighed down by anything and not, let's say, shoved under a rock by a current of a river. So because a lake doesn't usually have a current when it's so small. Um, yeah, I don't think yeah. there's a river that connects it. The lake itself apparently searched uh, by people with boats and sonar so it's hard yeah. to say right yeah i mean it's i mean that's a good amount of effort right that certainly would would seem like the, there probably isn't a, much of a chance that she would turn up because in, in those other cases like we've run into um gosh even the one with the unsolved mysteries case uh what's his name um the guy that, that got oh yeah, the yeah party yeah yeah but the, it was funny was it was, i mean not funny interesting it's kind of a similar situation not totally because um you know in that case there was a whole level of hostility and things going on that maybe um would have explained a different scenario but it was interesting that the body turned up and once again this was a body that turned up after they had searched all over the place for it right so then they didn't remember the family found the body oh yeah after the uh you know so that's that's why i get i mean it's too bad because i mean i'm frustrated i would want searchers to always find people right you wouldn't want i don't i don't want to be the one up here bad mouthing search efforts um that's not what i'm about but you know the fact is they're not perfect and they, they their track record is not not excellent and is that that's not being unfair that's just saying it's 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 a it's a hard job it's a, it's already almost futile but they try it anyway because you know they care and sometimes it works and they do find people so uh, yeah i mean from that from that perspective it's, it's sort of interesting to think like well well i guess what, what, one one final kind of kind of set of things around the accidental stuff was i thought 
Um, I have some accidental drowning stats and I have some winter activity, even though we're talking about May in this case. I thought it'd be interesting really quickly to look at the winter, the winter activity stuff, just to see what people die of when they're out. This, this is supposed to, you know, winter activity was sports activity in, in kind of the woods and things like that. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting to see like what, how deadly is this environment in the winter? Um, and May is not that far away from the cold weather, right? Um, probably a month yeah. or, or two months before that. It's probably, probably, it's probably snow there two months before that or a month before that. So, um, you know, that's, that's not totally crazy. And then the drowning deaths were interesting too, because you could kind of get a sense for, for like, like how often do people drown there in British, exactly, you know, British Columbia and, and, and what, what are they dying of? Like, where is it happening? And look, look at that. Like, like, so, you know, if we look at the, the, the winter stuff was interesting. I mean, obviously we have to exclude a lot of the, the I mean, it, no surprise. A lot of people die in, in the winter of um, like smacking into trees and stuff when they're skiing, but it was sort of interesting to see that some amount of people did die from things like um, I think exposure. So being left out, you know, staying out in the woods, um, I think. And then there was some number off to see uh, the age group stuff was interesting too, in terms of how it was clustering. But one of the numbers was interesting, I think, in terms of it being not specifically about skiing or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's just, I will have to, to go back and look at it. There was something, yeah, I mean, it, it's, wait, 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 sorry, uh, uh, go ahead, just, just go to the top top page again. Uh, next page. Yeah, and then, uh, sorry, then next one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is where they do these little breakdowns here related to snowboarding, skiing, so it is interesting that during the winter, only about eight eight percent of the deaths were basically not <laughs> not related to um, you know snowmobiling, skiing, or snowboarding. So, and and then eighty four percent of the 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 people that that died were male, um, which also that also sounds pretty pretty normal. But so so that it's interesting to think that. When you take, because because I guess you're kind of taking water out of the factor out of, out of the picture, right? So during a time of the year when the water is like, people aren't going in the water, and there's some amount of ice over the water, and you know just water is not part of the mix, right? Like the, those deaths are not there. But then you look at the drowning deaths, and there's some good amount of drowning deaths, and the drowning deaths, the number one place that happened was like rivers. And I think right after rivers, it was lakes. I think it was like forty something percent. Uh, of the drowning deaths uh, in the other in the other document, um, the one sorry the one uh, the other one uh, I linked to. Oh, it's the yeah sorry it's the oh the I see I see, I see I see I see I see yeah. So there was a good amount of of I mean what's what's the total per year? I think it was if we just go down and look at it. Yeah, that that bar there. I mean, it's not nothing. This is just British Columbia again. Once again, we're not talking about all of Canada or you know where this is this is apples apples with. The, the actual areas, you know, the actual area that this, this took place in. It's interesting to look that there is some some relatively high amount. I would say as high as as I mean, what's what's the total? What was the total for uh, for one year, drowning deaths? Um, you know, once again, remember we're talking about. I, I think most of these deaths probably happened during the warmer months, right? So from that, it, you know, it's like, well, why, Glenn, why why do do this big song and dance over? British, Col British Columbia's mortality statistics. Well, because I'm trying to figure out how likely this is. And we've, we've run into this, this a lot, right? I mean, whether it's Brian Schaefer or whoever it is we're talking about, if there's a body of water nearby, you know, Glenn's going to, going to bring up that they probably drowned, right? Or that, 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 that's, that's some kind of reasonable outcome for what, why, why someone could have disappeared without a trace, apparently. And that was where I, I led, you know, where, where it led me with this one, where I was like, oh, it's interesting to see that this isn't something that doesn't happen to anybody. It, it does happen, and it's not, it doesn't look like, I mean, it, it would be interesting to see, does, does this thing show the age breakout? Because I would say if, if this was like Los Angeles County, I would bet you a lot of these drowning deaths would be like kids in swimming pools and maybe like, like, like people drowning in the ocean 
like tourists and people like that, or, you know, people visiting, there'd be some, some cross section, but I don't, it's interesting to think that because British Columbia, I don't know that necessarily a lot of people have pools in their backyard, like happens in California or uh, Los Angeles, probably a lot of these deaths are like people going out and doing active stuff or maybe even drowning uh, in the, the process of like their occupation, you know, like loggers and stuff yeah. or fisher, fisher, uh, fishermen, commercial fishermen. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's it, it's sort of thinking about like, well, is, is there a way to, to try to assign just based on, you know, what we worked out today? Is there a, a, a more scientific way to at least dial in the guesses? And, um, yeah. you know, there's a there's, there's a book actually I'd like to recommend for people that kind of find this, this topic interesting when you're trying to guess or forecast something that maybe either you don't know a lot about or there's some kind of wide variety. Uh, there's a book called Super Forecasting and it's pretty cool. Um, it gives a lot of a lot of information around like kind of the the art and science of trying to predict the future, I guess, or trying to uh, figure out events like this. So yeah, I'll give that, uh, that uh, yeah. So that, 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 was, that was what was guiding some of my efforts here. Awesome, dude. Awesome. All right. So uh, I think we can probably conclude with our theory. So I will probably say that yeah, I don't really know what happened to um, Madison Scott. Uh, it seemed like the search was pretty extensive and they searched the lake. So she's probably not in the lake. I would probably say that she may have wandered off into someone else's car potentially and... Yeah, it's hard to say. It's uh, you know, it's really hard for me to say. I, I don't really know what happened, but you know, I'll leave it at that this week. Actually, you know, it's, it's interesting when you said that. I, I didn't even think about this. I don't know why. I never mean, some of the, no, did anybody ever bring up wild animals? Because we are talking about a, a part of the world that I think they have grizzlies and stuff up there, right? I think um, they they brought up a cougar, I believe. No, not a cougar. Maybe something huh. like that. That was spotted in the area, but uh, since there was no f evidence of s a struggle, so this was discounted by law enforcement. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you would think if it was a bear or something, she would you, people would have at least heard screaming, and there would have been more of a mess. Sometimes animals will drag somebody, so, you know, something uh, something that they killed. They'll either bury it, like I know bears like to bury things apparently and let them rot and ferment. Uh, apparently, they like food that's been aged. Um, sometimes, um, but yeah, I was thinking of some animals that will drag things back to their lair. Um, but yeah, once again, it, it doesn't seem to be the evidence for that. I, I would say that maybe an animal doesn't always leave really obvious evidence when it's doing its job right. Yeah. I mean, I, I know I, I've probably made too strong a case for the accidental death theory, which admittedly still seems pretty shaky given that we don't have a body um and you know of course we all hope that we don't have a body we would all like to hope that she's still alive um and wandered off in some kind of fugue state and you know state of mind and, and reinvented herself um i guess that could be a possibility if she was a, a kind of a wandering soul i do i do think we don't have as much feedback on her though in this case, and maybe that's why it's not as widespread, what, not as widely known, at least here, um, you know, where I am and, and, and where you are um, because of that. Maybe it is it is something that's sort of missing some of the personal touch. I don't know. I, I, I will say it's a little haunting when you look at that page we looked at that had all the missing people and that shit for British Columbia. And part of me just wonders, like, well, where are these people? Like, what's the story? You know, each one of those faces is a story. And then, you know, I, 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 I can't say this every show, even though I, I, I really should. But when you look at someone like, like Madison, and you're like, wow, this person lived their whole life. You know, think, think of the investment, not just their family and friends and everybody had like society had a society had, has, has a stake in this person. Right. I mean, the, the, the public education system, this person was going to be a, a viable, you know, uh, a, a citizen and taxpayer for Canada. Where'd she go? I mean, Canada should care about this too. And, you know, obviously uh, I'm sure they do, but 
you know, it, it is it is baffling to me. Like, where can disappearing people go? I, I guess that's just that's the thought I leave everybody with tonight. Like, where where do they go when 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 there's no clear sign? And I, I guess that that's always the theme of the show is is trying to explain why. Yeah. So I hope everyone enjoyed this week's show. And uh, we will catch you on the next week's episode. Please leave uh, your thoughts in the comment sections. And uh, please stay safe as always. And peace out.